Hello and welcome to round two coverage of the 2022 Professional World Championship. We are in Emporia, Kansas, and you're watching Joe Mez Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Uliberry. And before we get into round two coverage, we just want to do a really quick reminder that five rounds and then we have got our very special next day live. Yeah, it's going to be this Sunday. And just to clarify, coverage will come out as normal, albeit a little bit later. But if you want to get in on the fun, you can grab tickets in person or see the live stream. Yeah, get your tickets now. Jomez Pro, nextdaylive.com. Here we are, Emporia Country Club hosted the Worlds in 2016, Ricky Wysocki's first championship back then, along with Valerie Jenkins on the women's side. Par 66, nearly 11,000 feet, thanks to Stat Mando for that information. And on our league card, we have got Garrett Gerthy, obviously another really great season he's putting together, almost winning Portland, winning the next week at Beaver State Fling, playing that course Ogi free. We've got Aaron Gossage, who we see every year at OTB Open. That's like his coming out party. But now here he is at the World Championships. You're going to see a player with huge power, very quick, with a ton of snap, big forehand, big backhand. And Eagle McMahon, he is only 24, but he is basically our seasoned veteran of the card. The other three players combined have 68 rounds of league card coverage. He has 123 rounds, nearly double the rest of the card. And obviously, Anthony Barella, another breakout season, even though I feel like every season we say that about him. When's he going to put it all together? Could it be on the biggest stage? Predicted $20,000 payout for first place here at this year's Worlds, $200,000 added cash. It's sooner every day. The answer of when is Anthony going to right. put together? Man, is it, it's coming sooner rather than later i gotta think hole one par five 12 24. keep in mind that little ob area right before the basket where the drone is hanging out right now so annoying really makes you <laughs> make that decision box, what you're going to do on that third shot on the weekend from hawthorne florida representing it of a dis he is garrett girthy the average distance for our card, <laughs> it's gonna be, I mean, on a hole like this, they can chew up half the hole in one shot. Yeah. They're not gonna. No. This is the world championships. Yeah. It's a stockheiser for these guys. They can chew off 450 though, mm -hmm. easy. 400 yeah. to 450 yeah. on that heiser. It is playing downhill. Next on the box, also shooting 55 strokes on the weekend from Grand Junction, Colorado. Representing Discraft, Aaron Gossage. Aaron Gossage, man, the way he played OTB off the tee, it was just remarkable, almost flawless. He had some troubles on the putting green. When he puts everything together, he's just as good, just as talented, and, and just as many tools as any other player on tour. Well, watch this rocket that he pops off of hole one. Yeah. Wow. Watch for Double G's disc. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. I mean, that was a ma like a big time hyzer. I've played a few rounds with Aaron, and on the I throw a lot of forehands. Colorado. And he'll throw one, and I'll be like, that, that's sweet. I'm going to follow that line. Man. Nah. <laughs> We're coming up a little short <laughs> consistently. We've mentioned it before, but Aaron is related to the Hall of Famer, Baseball Hall of Famer, Richard Michael Goose Gossage. So he's got that throwing gene in the blood. Eagle's middle name is Wynn, so he's got that going for him. 
first name's Eagle. Yeah, so that would start. Are, that's a really good score to get. And oftentimes when, he is the McMahon. When I throw <laughs> when I throw a, a backhand hyzer off this tee when I'm practicing and dreaming that I might do it in the tournament and that I never do, and I have to be like, card for the day. make sure you get up over that tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These dudes are just going three so times the height of the tree, no this, problem. This is Anthony Barella. This is exciting for me personally. This is the Jomez debut of Elite Series of the Halo Boss. Going for a little more. Oh, and he's got it turned over. And that's going to be longer than the others. Yeah, at that left, or yeah, left side of the fairway, solid. Let's compare these two drives, Anthony Barella, rest of the card a little bit behind him. <laughs> what kind of advantage does Anthony have with that extra feet there? Nick? I think he loves that side because now the hyzer is just, he, can, he has room to get it up and over, swing it over all those trees. I would expect to see him now go to that big hyzer play. And he's used to going big off of this tee. Let, let's check it out. Let's see what he's done in the past. Yeah, there has been some pretty special moments here from Anthony Barella. Look at the hair. Oh, wow. I forgot about long-haired AB. Now, remember, this is a slightly shorter pin. It was back in the past before par fives were 1,200 feet. But look at the lift and the ground play all the way to the top of the hill. That's, that's every bit of 600 feet. I mean, you can see that wind pushing his shirt forward. He's going to be pushing that disc forward here in a second as well. Got this. A little bit of turn. Wow. Way, you, you'll see. Way up there past those sponsor walls. Big putt for Eagle. Sweet. <laughs> I, I know for a fact, though, he could get this one in two oh, as yeah. well. Oh, yeah. Can you recall how many times you started a round with an eagle in your career? Yeah, none. I mean, <laughs> pretty I sure. I feel like I've aced to start a round before. Well, I never have. <laughs> Four or five times. <laughs> six, never six, started seven, a round with an ace. Ten times, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Aaron, oh, boy. Very. I think he's going to get back, though. Yes. Okay. You know, we keep talking about wow. Aaron and, and OTB, but he took third at the DDO. Yeah. So he is yeah, used to playing these courses very well. And he wasn't on coverage for that. He just was doing that kind of in that big bunch. Mm -hmm. There was like five people that were on podium, I believe, at yeah. this year's DDO. That's still top three. He knows how to play these courses. With the big distance that Garrett has, he is – Able to just go pitch Heiser and Eagles going about 4.7%. Yeah, no follow through really required. Let's just play position golf. Yeah, that's a 400 foot spike Heiser, and he did a little short. Rewind that and watch his movement with his feet. He barely did anything. And he'd be able to just do the same very minimal effort, but getting a bunch of distance in the perfect position. And this isn't. AB's first time on a lead card at the World Championship. It seems like every year for the past few years, he's been peaking his way up there and, and making lead cards. So he's, he's been in the mix for sure. Yeah, so he's used to he's used to this. This is getting away from Eagle a little bit. Oh. I think it had the distance to stay in bounds, get around that tree. That tree is actually in an out-of-bounds area. Sidearm, sidearm, sidearm. I don't think I've seen this yet. That's the way I try to do it, and it can be done. This it can go super long, too, apparently. Puts the brakes on on the downslope. Decent result for the power. But, yeah, wow. Averaged over 400 feet per forehand. Actually, more than that because he's passed the basket by a good deal. So This needs to slow down as well. That tree's good for it. Helpful. Nice shot. Stat Mando says that the world's lead card experience for Garrett, Aaron, and AB combined is one round. So probably just AB. I thought, had Garrett never been on lead card before? 
at Worlds? I don't know the answer to that. It's very interesting. I remember watching AB on coverage at some point at yeah. the World Championships. It might not have been League Card, but he was he was been in the mix. Eagle electing to lay that one up. Like for the approach to be much closer. Very scary putt to run from the top of the hill. Could be thinking of the U.S. Championships as well. I remember him coming out with like mm -hmm. a 13 under first round. Okay. So pars. So kind of surprising because they were all in such good mm -hmm. position. Wow. And four unique ways of getting a par that we did not expect. There was another player who had a par that he was probably not expecting on the course. Gavin <coughs> Babcock, 401 foot throw in After to save the par. Back to back out of bounds shots. <laughs> and then just a dunk from 401. Crazy. And we know where that one was going if it doesn't hit the bucky. <laughs> I, I <laughs> make it three OBs. I would have lost a, a bet for a lot of money if you would have told me that the four of these guys, safe off the tee, zero out of bounds combined for the card, not a yeah. single birdie, I would have lost all the money in my bank account. That was so strange because they were all, after two shots, they were all loving their spot. I would have loved to tell AB, hey, man, you're going to take a par, just so that he would go after it to try to get the <laughs> Looking at hole two, par four, 745 uphill. Big turnover is a popular play. Occasionally you see the roller. I'm guessing we're going to see the big forehand out of Aaron if hole one's any indication. This might go to the top of the hill. Yeah, that's going to be really good. That is up there with Paul McBeth's drive at the 2020 DDO. That was essentially the same thing. Top of the hill, unbelievably far. Man, Aaron just kind of, he smokes it. Mm-hmm. That tree there is about 320 to the pin. Huge advantage. He's going to have a pitch forehand around the corner for a second. This needs to come out. Wow. It it's did. past Garrett's by about 30 feet. And don't you just, it just doesn't look explosive. Like it's just, this is a, a calmer, wiser Eagle McMahon in a way where it, even though it's going so far, he just looks so controlled and smooth with it. His efficiency is unmatched, I think. I don't think, I, I would have loved to have seen a, a young Scott Stokely throwing the forehand with the disc technology that they had in the 90s because I think that maybe his forehand, even though it was a little bit more wild looking, it got crazy distance that we can't even achieve in today's disc technology. Yeah. But the way the Eagle throws his shots, it's just so minimal in its effort and it just can go so far. Didn't look like AB did much on his either. Uh -uh. That kind of went up there pretty far. Yeah. Excellent approach for Aaron. He's going to have a short putt for the birdie. AB also keeping this one out wide. This needs to slow. Perfect. Slow down. Great shot. A little overhead shot to see McBan's drive. Not quite 30 past Garrett's, but 500 feet up that hill with that awkward angle that you have to approach this tee pad to throw the turnover. I, what an advantage. They're going to be able to see the basket from where the drive's landed. It's You're, significantly uphill, too. That's amazing distance. When you get that extra 100 feet compared to, like, your regular turning point, it makes the hole, I feel like, a lot easier because I feel like when, let's say, you or me, Nate, we're trying to throw that late turn, that tree is kind of right in that turn radius. Absolutely. And for them, it's farther out, so they're not even thinking about that tree. He goes spike hyzer over it. That's everything. crazy. I'm really shocked to see that approach with that drive. Yeah, of all the choices you could have made, I did not see that one coming, but Eagle's kind of looking up a little bit too, huh? A little higher than I might have thought, but trying to play it around the backside, and they both. Oh, my goodness. I think they both kind of squandered that. Did you guys see? Did Garrett get through? Doesn't look like he did. I think wow. he got the top of those trees. And Eagle is just beside himself. And and he should be. He should be. 
can make up for it here with a big putt, but that's going to come up low. And two uh, opportunities just thrown away on the first two holes after playing the first shot on this hole and the first two shots on the last hole perfectly. Nice save from Garrett outside the circle. Secures the birdie. Take another look at this. That hyzer delivery. Perfect in the center. You know, Garrett's going to be a dangerous person to mess with in this tournament because when it the winds are down, he's able to control that putt a little more than yes. when it's windy. When it gets windy, tougher for for, for Garrett. Just, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so with the winds being down for the whole week as projected, yeah. I look for Garrett to really not be going anywhere. He just throws it just too pure. Yeah. Isn't it crazy how fun these courses are with the wind being down? It's amazing to see what can be done for sure. Aaron with a nice birdie putt and AB parked. So Eagle will be dropping a stroke to the card with the longest drive. I'm curious what we're going to see from Eagle on this next hole because this was clearly a Eagle McMahon just a forehand snack mm -hmm. in in days gone by. But with the injury, I got to think he's going to go low backhand straight at it. Well, if you watched our practice rounds, you'd get a pretty good idea what he'd do on this hole. He's probably going to be doing that flip up down the middle. I, he, That's really the only play, I think, for the backhand player. There was a time back in the day when we used to see players go for the flex play out over the sidewalk. Yeah. But as the trees have gotten bigger and the branches have gotten wider, that gap has gotten smaller. Well, here it is. Garrett's still got... No, he's going wide. Yeah, not flex. Yeah, he's got All the hyzer. ambition. Does he have the power to go with the ambition? Oh, what a bad little... Yes, good. Wow. That was going to be a really bad break if that bounced over the path. That's so wide. Four sixty-six. And so far. I mean, he's like, <laughs> what, 40 feet? Now, that's, that's now crazy. with the angle that Gossage has been throwing on, this should be easy. Same angle. Yep. Yeah, the hyzer makes this a little longer. Does not matter oh my to gosh, Aaron Gossage. So good. Absolutely there's, parked. There's no difference between his tee shot on one, his second shot on one, his third shot on one. Tee on shot, one. <laughs> on two, yeah. His tee on two. Yep. And now that. Yeah. They were all the same shot. And well, let me guess what we were going to see on hole four. It's going to look a lot like that. AB <laughs> coming up short. Hey, this hole right here is actually a little bit tough for AB in that his forehand goes so far that the out of bounds behind the basket has got to be playing into his head a little bit with how far this goes downhill. Oh. Maybe so, but you'd think he could just swing it a little wider to control that, though there is OB left as well. This is so understable and so good. That is good. Yes, it and is. Any, mid -range. Anything in the circle on this hole with a backhand is fantastic. Yeah, Nate, thanks for asking. I threw backhand on it, too. Oh, good job, man. Incred incredible. I was not we had a star <laughs> frame for the commentators, didn't we, on this one? Uh, yeah, I had about a 10-footer myself. Ooh. All right, then. That one's just going to be a par for AB. That tree is the only really thing in the way for you guys, you know, going with that wide side arm. Yes. That's the only thing I was concerned about as Garrett's goes wide right. That was the only thing I was concerned about for a, uh, sorry, Aaron's drive was yes. hitting that tree. There it is. Eagle on the board. Great catch. Mm -hmm. Not his best stroke, but that one goes in. And he's getting out of here. In almost a hurry. <laughs> that was almost a hurry for sure. It's polite of him, though. Let his group mates get down to business. Yeah, I was talking to somebody who hadn't ever seen coverage before, and he said, I got one question. Why do you guys run after the putts? Because he's a traditional golfer. And so he was like, uh -huh. why do you guys run after it? Like, why not just walk it in? I'm like, well, I'm trying to get out of the way, one of mm -hmm. the things. And it's just kind of... He's like the short. I'm like the shorter the putt is, you can kind of walk it in. But if you make it from 70 feet and you slow roll your card, yeah. I, well, you have greens to work with in golf. Yeah. If someone ran with their cleats across the green to make, right. to get their 30 foot putt that just dropped, that would yeah. be ridiculous. Exactly. This hole used to be ridiculous. Now it's pretty cool. Very cool. Instead of uh, 600 feet, it is 388 feet. You have a couple options available to you. Really low straight shot can get there or a big turnover or forehand up over that golf green. 
There is OB behind the basket. There's a fence on the right side as well. I wouldn't mind if they just brought that OB way tighter so that your dumb sidearms went right in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aaron's is cool. Aaron, you're cool, though. Yeah, yeah. Yours is cool. Gosh, God. that's so high. Does this have enough <laughs> so, distance? Oh, yeah, that's slow all down. over it. Wow. Okay, so it's good. a little short. Circle's edge short. And he's looking at the tee there. I was gonna I was gonna say something about that. The top edge of that box, the left side of it, very slick. Many people on my card I saw were slipping. Looked like Eagle didn't have any issue with that, but I don't think he's got this turned over as much as he'd like. Never mind, he's twenty three feet away. He's loving things. Yeah, that's that's that, impressive. That turned way late. I yeah. didn't think it had enough, but it kept moving. Garrett probably going to go down the middle on T-Bird. This is looking fantastic. Wow. That is slow just down. picture perfect. It's going to slow down. Right? Wow. Yep. That is a low ceiling. I mean, Very. this is an impressive. I mean, it's Garrett, so of course. But this is an impressive distance for a fairway driver given the ceiling restriction, especially because that little ridge about 50 feet short of the basket because not only you got to get under that mm -hmm. ceiling, but you got to be over that little slope. Incredible shot. One of the things that I really like about Emporia Country Club is that it keeps evolving. Eric McCabe has done, putting so much passion and hard work into making sure that he has the best course that challenges the players. And it might not look incredibly challenging on film, but for the players, I guarantee you, this course does challenge almost every shot you have. Yeah, there's plenty of danger, that's for sure. Aaron, what a nice up and in. That was a beautiful putt, putt right there. Great pace, perfectly centered. Just a touch of hyzer, exactly how he wants that putt to look. Okay. The fourth and third farthest shots from the hole are in. AB can make this short one we're gonna have a nice star frame here on the fourth hole and we are yeah that's cool what's that coming in as far as difficulty Jeremy? it's on the easier half it's the 12th but 2.86 it's not necessarily a gimme obviously our card made it look like one but you can see the difficulty of it that if you go that forehand route, you have to have a ton of power because it's a very wide shot with the out of bounds. You really have to swing it far back to the right. Looking at hole five, par four, 675, flat tee shot, and then an uphill second with all these low ceiling trees. A lot of players will elect to take the big backhand hyzer out over the out of bounds path for the second shot, but it's a high risk play. You catch those trees, you can roll OB, and there's also the chance that you just grip lock it a little bit and hang it out. I think very soon we're going to see that basket pushed a little bit farther back. Aaron going with his ninth consecutive blue disc blaster. <laughs> perfect again. Do you guys think this basket's in the perfect position? I do. I think it's fine. I, I like it. I think that it makes you really have to challenge those limbs on the right side with the backhand hyzer approach that really scare the player. It's yeah. Also, if you go straight like this for Eagle, you have to get the distance that he had. If you're 30 feet short of that, you're kind of a no man's land in the approach room. You don't know really what to do. I feel like you used to be able to kind of throw under the trees and get a little skip on this hole, and that those days are gone. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just Velcro under there. It's a lot harder to get all the way up to the basket. Yeah, like where Garrett landed, I think he's going to have a little bit more challenging uh, approach than what Eagle will be faced with. Oh, boy. Needs to move left. It does. Fortunate. A little tree kick, and it still fights back in balance. Yeah, I was going to say unfortunate, then fortunate. Yes. That was a pretty gnarly kick off of a tiny limb. Yes. And this is a mid-range for AB, but that's tight. Pulled a little bit inside. He's going to have a long uphill low ceiling putt for the birdie. Aaron looking at that backhand hyzer out and around. You can see how those 
challenge those limbs just a bit, but that was a very well-placed approach. Gossage is going to have four in a row now. And he's leading the world championship. Yes, he is. And you can see, look, look what Garrett had there. That low ceiling uphill the whole way. Low ceiling and uphill, especially with grass that's not skipping. That is a tough thing to do. See how Eagle does it. Tries to get that edge over stable disc. Yeah, he's going with that mutant. Mm -hmm. that has a lot of low speed stability. Yeah, can make sure you get a little skip if you throw something that over stable. Birdie. Birdie. It's a nice start for everybody, but extra nice for Aaron. Four under through five. I don't think he's going to be throwing that blue disc sidearm on this one. I don't you, could. you could. You could. You, you yeah, really could. could. But it, you'd be crazy. You have to go over OB immediately, bringing in unnecessary risk for sure this is a short hole 339 a lot out of bounds but it's just a flat backhand fairway driver or overstable mid-range for these guys probably just throw it straight don't saw it off and let it take one skip out of sight you should be happy with the result Current standings, Tristan Tanner from the B pool ahead, actually, technically. When was the last time someone from B pool was leading the world championships? I can't. At, at any point. I can't remember a time. I don't, I doubt that's ever happened before. Aaron just needs to do what it's doing. It's going to be a tricky putt. He's probably going to have to straddle out to the left. Going to be obstructed with the big tree on the green. I do recall in i think 2008 mike randolph came from the b pool to make the final nine wow that's his, that's all i got kalamazoo michigan you saying you said 2008 yep that was kalamazoo michigan yes garrett with a nice angle skips up to 26 feet And I got a little stat mando thing in my brain too. Okay. <laughs> well. Oh, you. Oh, that was it. You yeah. shared it. Okay. <laughs> well, I was. I, I went to the same place. I was like, really? Let's hear it. Well, I, 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 I got one for you. I went down and deep in there. A B with a nice drive, but I've got one for you. The winner of Worlds has not come from outside 13th place after round one since the year 2000 in Michigan when Ken Climo won his 10th World Championship. Wow. And Aaron's putt is in again, dead center. This man is on a tear right now. Putt looks good. Putt's on the pole, nose down, looks in control. Ooh. That one. <laughs> Little left side, but it hangs. <laughs> Same score. Anthony in for birdie as well. Eggs. Par. Here's an interesting one for you. Of the last four worlds, only one of those years has the winner come from the lead card after round one, and that was Macbeth in 2019. When he was in third place after round one. So, so you're telling me the sweet spot is second to third card, somewhere in that range. Well, I was in tenth. <laughs> well, you're in good position right now. If late trends are going to continue I this like year, I like the way you think. Chase card check in here, thanks to Gatekeeper Media. Looking at Corey Ellis. He's in that sweet spot right now. He likes button. 
I would too if my putt looked anything <laughs> like his. Man. Oh, there's that guy you keep mentioning. All these stats come in, and it seems like his name gets dropped a lot, a, a, along with the likes of some Ken Climo guy mm -hmm. from the past. Look at Corey's drive in the hole we just played here on six. It looks like he's going mid-range. That's coming up short, but he likes to putt. Beth swings it in. Maybe a little more skip action here. Similar. I, I just, what a, what a gift. I don't know. I think he worked pretty hard for it. He's, he's given the basket a nice gift. <laughs> That's what uh, did you interpret it in another way? I did. No, of course. It's 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 a gift that he has the ability to practice and learn from practice. I practice a lot. I just don't learn from it. Oh, does that get in bounds? Yes, it, it's in bounds. But if he puts from there, he's going to be in great position. That's perfect. Yep. But Corey is. Lucky to be in bounds. Oh my goodness! You, you you're not have showing. To be kidding you're me. not showing us a birdie, are you? There's no way he's jamming that putt for the birdie after all that. That was like, what, five fifty? Yes. I'm that gonna, was yes. huge. I'm gonna ask our editors to stop showing us chase card check-ins if Corey Ellis knocks down that putt after hitting the first tree no and way. birdies this. I do not want to watch it anymore. Okay. We can keep watching this, but man, to almost birdie after hitting the first tree in this hole, has anyone ever done that before? I can't imagine. That scared me. It, that shook me to my core. Paul says, that's cute. There's a bird. to Gatekeeper Media for sharing that great coverage as we see Aaron going big forehand and he turns a low ceiling shot somehow into a high hyzer. I don't know how, how he's done that. Yeah, how did it get up there? And that's just <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> distance God, that's... way over the ditch, way past where we just saw Macbeth. That is so far. Different disc. Yeah, Flipped it was. Up. Needs yeah. a little more flip for this shot. Ooh, that just gets under the branch, but this is humming. Does have to get down right yeah, if he gets on the left side that's gonna open up maybe a hyzer through that line of trees down the left side yeah he's in he has enough forehand easily to, to make that work down the side down that left side alley i think this one's not not yeah. gonna be good yeah well actually it's in bounds no it's wait not wait a minute wait just a slid across OB off the sidewalk i, I might have just slid across the sidewalk I don't know, Nate. I, I thought I saw the disc in grass. Well, there is grass on both sides, is the thing. Mm -hmm. I think it. I think it might have just been. Well, uh, we've got one of our editors is pointing to okay. to me saying, "You got it." Well, there was also an OB graphic. So all I, I all I know is I'm. You know what? If Corey Ellis is getting close to up and down from back there, I'm giving green light go to Eagle. What does he do? Hyzer over the top of the tree? I think he does tree. the same Absolutely. thing, just straight down the middle. You think he even past, needs to go flex? It. Maybe not. I think he can get there all hyzer. There is a lot of different diversity in these throws, though. We're going to see all kinds of different shots. He's looking upward. Wow. Seems like it well, seems like he didn't throw it hard yeah, enough, but, but then every time that happens, he did throw it hard enough. Yeah, yeah. he's in C2. Solid. Wow. Skinny little gap right here. Underneath, inside that tree, skip it in. Very good. Very good. Pretty technical. Mm-hmm. 
and I did see Anthony's disc in bounds. You can see right now clearly on your screen there is out of bounds off the sidewalk, and that's where Anthony Barella went out of bounds. Wait, he was out of bounds? He was out of bounds on the grass right of the sidewalk. This makes no sense. There is a new out of bounds line there. It's always been the sidewalk, but not this year, not the World Championships. I don't know why either. I feel like I'm going to say it, and I'll be wrong again somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Aaron, the... It's a little upshot yeah. kind of gets away from him right there. That is no gimme from there. A chance to get six in a row here in the front nine. He still has an opportunity, obviously. Eagle up first with the birdie look. Well, he's got to see two players back to back hit first tree and nearly still pick up the birdie, showing why this is the fourth easiest hole in the course. Aaron finally off the birdie train. A couple in a row now for Anthony. No, oh, that's a par. Oh. OB, uh, remember wow. how he went hey. out. Thanks, man. Gosh darn it. I ruined it. Thanks. I, that was my line. <laughs> Anthony with the par <laughs> after going OB, that was obvious to me the whole time. <laughs> Garrett with a couple birdies now, and he's only one stroke back of Aaron. I'm just going to wait patiently. I'm going to trust our graphic guys, and I'm going to just <laughs> tell how I see it. Aaron makes that putt. Very good. When you first sign up for a PDJ membership, you're given a PDJ number. Your PDJ number is a stamp for when you got involved in the sport. It's a badge of pride for players and a part of your disc golf identity. Get your number today. Visit pdj.com slash join. Looking at hole eight, par five, 994 feet. I think the drive is the toughest shot here. You've got sort of a narrow strip of land that's inbounds. If you can get the disc down safe, it becomes a pretty likely birdie in my opinion. Obviously playing to the longer basket here, OB left and right, just around circle's edge, or maybe even a little closer. So you have to be accurate, but let's see how aggressive these guys get. We're gonna take a look back <laughs> to round oh. three. Many players considering this the windiest round they have ever played. And Ricky skipping out of bounds. I mean, how do you even keep it in bounds in this type of wind? I, f I like my neck muscles just like tighten up in a painful way just watching this. Yeah. Just the tension and the stress of this day. And it, you put hyzer on it, you think that's what you got to do. You put any sort of anhyzer and that's what happens. Oh, man. This place really is a wild ride in the wind, though. It is. Gosh. It's it's almost fun, but it's also like it's not quite disc golf. Oh my god, you are right about that. I am stressed out. I don't feel good. <laughs> this isn't real. <laughs> this is old and fake, and it's not going to be like this tomorrow, <laughs> right? No. Wow. I love the passion. That of Kansas disc golf. This is my third career world championship in the state of Kansas. But I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> it is. But I love the passion. I love the volunteers. I love the hard work. Less the less of the thirty five, more of the ten. Ten is yeah. like that's a good tough wind. Look at the difference. Wow. Yeah, I'm mean, fourth round the next day, calm winds. People actually average below par, but this week in calm wind, we're Wait back to 5.3. Wait. 
that's not that can't be real. That is that's real. crazy. What yeah. are people doing? To, yeah, today's average 5.29. There was just a slew of eights and even some really? nines. Really? People yeah. getting a little too aggressive. Let's see what people are doing. Yeah, guys. does this sit down? Not a chance. And that was a putter. It was. How Garrett, did it skip like that? It looked like Garrett was kind of going, and this is a putter. Hmm. Not sure about, well, when you have such a big sidearm, I guess you don't need a lot of distance, and it's kind of a fat landing zone. The notes on this hole. Ooh, for, just. Geez. that. I mean, if that catches grass on the right side, so. gone. The note on this hole, you don't need more than 300 feet on this tee. Get it in bounds. Go big on your second shot. You just have to stick this little runway here. Uh-oh. AB has just curled up in time. It's a little on the short side, but with all these players' distance, you just do not need to get a massive tee shot in bounds. Just we're about to see a massive tee shot. Are we not cloud breaker in bounds though? Why that I don't know, but this has got to be big, right? He's he's going full send. Yes. Well, he was doing. I don't know. This is yeah. This, this has got to be. It did flip up. That was so much hyzer to start. What a crazy maniac okay so that's out of bounds but that's an uh, almost might be uh, he might be in birdie range yeah he can see the basket from yeah, he'll be surely. able to see the entire basket and the entire fairway what's in front of him a b however about 250 feet short of this, eagles out of bounds drive. Get down oh i don't like this yeah that went out of bounds by yeah. the ways. much too overstable Garrett looking to line up the Anheuser, which you have to do. That didn't come out Anheuser, which means this could be in trouble as well. He's going with that old Cam Todd T-Bird, that really nice. Oh, okay. So really understable. Very old. Yes, a very, very good disc for Garrett. Very straight, reliable, very little fade. I was going to say, coming out with Anheuser on that is a good play because you stop the trajectory. Mm -hmm. You know, it's running out of, out of the business. Blue blasters back, and it's blasting. Yep, yeah, he's he's making short work of this front nine with that disc alone. Is he gonna do the Heiser thing? No, this no, is he's midi. actually yeah, he's going playing for down par. the middle, playing for par. I don't know if he's going for par. I think he is. Yeah, okay, that's, that's yeah. the tactic. That tactic. I don't even care how hard Eagle throws it. He's not getting I feel like the he, tactics of the basket from back there. He just wants to go big drive, guaranteed birdie if he's inbounds, or lay off and take par. Maybe heavy on the hyzer on this shot as well, but the grass is going to collect, and he'll have a par putt from just inside the circle. Garrett's favorite rock three. Very floaty, very parky. Very much touch. Very much touch. Very mucho. Good touch. recovery after the out-of-bounds tee shot for Garrett. Got to have some touch on this approach because it is tight. Out-of-bounds left, out-of-bounds right, and it, it feels a lot tighter than it probably is. Aaron will be taking the only birdie on the card unless Eagle throws this in. With that putt, our card remains clean still on the front nine. If they're able to do that on after hole nine, that'd be pretty amazing as we're about to get to our hardest hole on the course. Aaron's looking nice, guys. Six down to the, through the front and an opportunity to get to seven. What do you guys think, front nine or back nine more scorable? Front, I think. I think, oh. It's tough, right? I feel like it's pretty evil, evenly matched. I, just think I do that, too. I think there's the there's the two-stroke swings more present on the back nine. So okay. I guess if you consider, if you yeah. get a birdie, then you're scoring because you're doing better than the field. And that way, maybe the back, but I think you can get more birdies on the front nine. Hole nine, par four, 719. Like you guys said, hardest hole on the course today. 
You're playing out of this gap, OB the entire way until you pass this little barrier. Left of the sidewalk is out of bounds. These guys are going to be thrown. Well, a couple of them are going to be doing this sidearm, which really plays well if you can get it way out of the gap around the corner. If uh, Aaron's shown us anything so far in the front nine is that he certainly can get way around the corner. That's going to be fine. I mean, the key thing here, I think, is that in years past, if you go OB over that path, you go to a drop zone where the basket is unreachable. That is no longer the case. And I think that allows players certainly allowed me to take my aggression off the tee up two notches. And I think that's going to make this hole a lot more attackable because now if you do go out of bounds, which this is flirting a little bit, it is out of bounds. Mm -hmm. He's going to play from there and he's going to have an opportunity a fair to opportunity. make a par. Yep. I think it's one of the best changes of all the changes that have happened on this course. I'm really happy that they decided to finally take that leap and say, all right, if a disc just creeps and crawls an inch out of bounds off this tee, 430 feet up the fairway, we're not going to send him back 200 feet and guarantee a bogey. And honestly, that drop zone is pretty brutal. Double bogeys happen more often than just bogeys. I think AB just threw it to a, almost a perfect spot. Yes, he did. Just a mid-range. Whoa. This, this needs to get a little lucky. Is in danger. Green flag for Eagle, big break there. Early trees can be disastrous on the ninth. Even though he's pitching out, I guarantee you he is very happy that, that the spotter did not show red flag. For sure. Wow, he doesn't really have the opportunity to get much. That's but still going to be a tough shot. Left side of the fairway, though, and mm -hmm. that's, that's key there. If he overturns that, he's not has no chance at birdie. Pretty cool look here to help you kind of understand the shape of this hole, even from where he is on his second, totally blind, going uphill around the corner with OB kind of looming deep. So you really have to get that turnover perfect. If it flexes out on you, if you overturn it, you're in the woods, flex out, you could be out of bounds. He's going to go with that same putter. This should be a pretty big swing on it, though. Got a hold turn. If it starts to flex out, he is going to find himself out of bounds. That is not oh. flexing out. Whoa. Wow. Eagle McMahon. That's gross. That is a shot you don't really practice in the field. <laughs> that's incredible. That's just that's a brilliant tough, shot shaping. Yeah, that's a tough one to do if somebody had a really flippy driver. That's how mm -hmm. high and turned over he got that. This is great, too. Wow, Garrett, what a shot. With those two shots, we might be seeing a front nine with zero bogeys. Wow. That's nuts on this course. I don't care lead card, anything. That's, that's guys playing like they want to stay up here. Mm -hmm. Quite enough turn. Might, might be pretty obstructed from there. Yeah, that's going to be pinched off. That might that might not even be a look. It might not be an easy approach through the tree. I just don't want EB to get crazy aggressive because, okay. Good then tree. that goes past, and then the red starts falling on the scorecard. Yeah, look at this. Aaron's got to go flick through. Ooh. Thanks. I'm telling you. Oh, so good. That, I mean... That worked great, but anyone who's played disc golf can tell you that that shot can also work really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Going through that tiny thing with all the wispy branches, well Eagle done. Eagle for par, that is an elite save. Yeah, it is. Just the, the presence of mind to not try to bite off more with his second shot, to just put himself in a position where he'll allow his abilities to take hold on his third, incredible. Good, good one from Garrett as well. Great par save for Garrett after the out of bounds drive. So we will have four pars on hole nine. Kind of an impressive feat, honestly, that not one player 
had any out of bounds woes that cost them a bogey on this front line. Good golf played really by all. Slow, I guess, for Anthony at only three under, but six down for Aaron. That's going to put him in the lead temporarily. 16 under leading it at the moment, and it shows he has now pulled ahead of Tristan Tanner, who is at the other course. Paul McBeth lurking there at 15 as well. Couple 14s, couple 13s, a lot of players in the mix. And I only say temporarily because our pools, normally we don't have to say that because B pool usually doesn't come up and join to the top of the leader card. But with Tristan Tanner, we can't necessarily say that Aaron's in first place because we don't really know what he's doing over at Jones Park right now. Sure. But right now in the A pool, Aaron Gossage in first place. Thank you guys so much for your support. As always, we'll be right back with the back nine from Emporia Country Club. 